Hello, and welcome to our webinar on how to read your GMS report. This weekly or monthly report has a lot of useful information as to what's going on with your network. We're going to cover what a typical weekly report looks like and what each report means. So let's go ahead and get started. Here we see an overview of the data usage for the week. Now what constitutes data usage? Any and all data that flows through the sonic wall will be shown here, so it's a good overall report to see how much traffic is going on in your network. Since all customer networks and data usage are different, we suggest that you set a baseline by reviewing the first few weeks of GMS reports. Your traffic should be in the same ballpark week over week, so you can get a feel for uh, what's a normal amount of data usage for your company. With, with that knowledge in place, you can spot when there's a high usage day um, and investigate from there. As we can see in this report, it's got some spikes on, looks like Thursday and Friday. Um, it may just be busier days of the week, so depending on the type of business, it may be normal and may not. Uh, another question that actually comes up a lot is the cost column that you'll see here. Um, this is useful if you have a metered circuit, meaning that you're charged by your carrier based on how much data you use. Uh, the default uh, cost is one penny per megabyte, um, but that can be configured differently if you'd like. If you don't have a metered circuit, then feel free to ignore that column that has no actual bearing on the cost that the carrier would be charging to you. In our next report, um, we'll see it's a much more in-depth breakdown of the actual previous report. This is the data usage um, based on top initiators um, versus the overall data usage, which was the previous report we looked at. Now, an initiator is someone who requests or starts the connection. This report will give you some insight into who is using up the most bandwidth in your network you can quickly see if someone is using more traffic than your others, um, than the other users, excuse me. Um, and with that in hand, you can evaluate why is this user consuming more data than the rest? Is that part of their job function, or are they just eating up ban business bandwidth with Pandora and Netflix? Now, a common question is if I see public IPs um, on my report uh, for initiators. Now, if you see a public IP address, on a initiator report, that means you have a public facing server that someone out on the internet uh, with a public IP address is initiating traffic to you. Uh, now if you don't believe that you have any servers that should be public facing and you're seeing public IP addresses on your initiator report, definitely um, something we want to look at. So please give us a, a contact and reach out to us and we will uh, definitely investigate to review the GMS report with you, make any modifications to your firewall as needed. So now the inverse of the initiator's report is the um, responder's report. So now this shows who is responding to uh, the request. Now this can be useful to see where your users are going to and what is using up all the bandwidth. Now we can see uh, from this re report um, there is a lot of data usage for Windows updates and McAfee. So we can see different ones for McAfee, um, Office, and a couple different uh, other different responders, right? The previous report showed us who's making the connection, which is one of our users, typically, and this is who's responding. So where are they going to? We have a majority of people going to this email server, um, so probably for hosted email in that case. So this one's a good report. This is actually the web activity, right? So um, we, pre we started in the previous report showing data usage. Now web activity is a subset of that. It's just web traffic, just websites that you're going to versus all overall data usage, which includes everything going in and out, right? So one of the nice features of this report is the category column. Now we can quickly see um, which sites our users are going to and uh, if, whether that's business appropriate or not. For everything that we see here that we don't want to allow, it's easy to call us and open a ticket and we can go ahead and block that site or that category depending on what's business appropriate for you or not. As we can see here, a majority of this, you know, business and economy and, and some other stuff, information technology, a bunch of different stuff. There's some uh, online brokerage and trading, so that may be work appropriate, that may not be. It definitely depends on the business case, right? So the browse time um, column is going to show how long the connection lasted. 
So on this one, we can actually see that someone spent a little over an hour browsing their email throughout the week. So on this report, like the data usage initiators report, this web activity top initiators report shows who's using the most data while browsing websites. Now this is a good report to see who's spending the most time browsing websites and if that is vastly different from other employees. Something else to mention is that if you have single sign-on and LDAP integration, uh, the user's domain account will actually show up here under the initiator host column. And so that makes it very nice to see, okay, um, there's, there's a little harder to tie down a IP address of a client con computer with a user, but if you have Active Directory integration, then you can quickly see that, hey, Joe Smith was the user logged in, he was the one making that connection and that request and it was um, on his behalf, right? And so instead of saying, oh, I didn't use that, someone else was using my computer, um, this kind of, uh, it's good for a lot of HR reports and lots of requests that we get um, for users who are trying to go some places that they're not. So um, definitely a, a good recommendation for LDAP integration with the GMS reports. So this one is actually going to show you the categories of what um, is being blocked by the sonic wall. So this is a web filter. So these are um, something that is configured on the sonic wall to say, hey, you are not allowed to go to these websites, the content filtering service. And these are the attempts uh, to load a web page that has been restricted by the administrator. And we can see different categories from there. Um, actually, this is a nice report, but the next one's actually better because it actually tells us the, the web filter by initiator and it shows each user and where they're attempting to go to. So this is a very good report and a, a common one we get for HR requests to say, hey, I need to see where my users are going, where they're trying to go that they're not supposed to be going to. It's a good conversation starter as well. So you can take this and, and go talk with the employee if it's not an HR situation yet and ask, hey, why are you trying to go to these websites that are being blocked? Um, and, you know, kind of observe the habits and see, um, have a conversation with the uh, end user to see exactly why they're trying to go somewhere where they're not supposed to go. So this is one of the more popular reports and it sparks a lot of questions the top intrusions detected will show uh, possible exploits that the sonic wall has detected. Now this is a good report to review. As you can see below, there's a, um, quite a few failed login attempts to a SQL server. While someone may have forgotten a password, the fact that it happened 365 times during the week is definitely a cause for concern. I apologize, 327 times um, during the week that's definitely something that's that's not normal and most likely an attempt by someone to um, possibly break into the SQL Server and um, gain access to something that they definitely should not have, right? And those are the kinds of things that when you see stuff that pops up on your GMS reports, anything that's confusing or you want more explanation or you're concerned, definitely uh, give us a call. We will go over any of these GMS reports with you let you know if that's something you should be concerned about, how we can address it, how we can try to mitigate it, um, or if it's something that is you know, benign and not a uh, cause for concern. So on this report, it's the uh, intrusions top initiators. So we can actually see who is making um, the connection for the intrusion, who's initiating the session, right? So the, the, while we can see here who initiated um, 327 times, so this one's pretty cut and dry, um, with the previous one of the SQL servers, um, but what the best way we recommend to kind of correlate the data between the intrusions detected and who's initiating the particular intrusions is actually log into the GMS portal itself. Um, and now is a good time to mention that um, if you do not have access to the GMS portal, feel free to reach out to us and we'll get you set up with a user account and a password where you can log into the, the portal, see your unit, pull any GMS reports, uh, correlate that data and you know kind of drill in and see, okay, well, I see 327 events of someone trying to log into my SQL server. 
Now, who who is initiating that connection? What time was this? Where you know, get a lot more details to get those details. This is kind of a the GMS report that you're getting emailed is um, kind of a good at a glance. But if you really want to drill down and do more forensics, um, the GMS portal is the best way to to accomplish that because you have the ability to drill down and correlate that data. So for the other ones, they're, they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, luckily for the customer, we pulled this GMS report, there's no gateway viruses, so that's, that's a plus. So if you see anything there, then that's definitely you know, something we want to look at and see, especially if there's repeated attempts, if, if there's something maybe um, still on a client PC that you know, needs need to be remediated or what have you. Um, attacks um, is a subset of the intrusions, and there's a couple different things here. Um, a port scan, which is common, you know, unfortunately that's just kind of how the internet works nowadays. People are always scanning to try to check to see if there is open ports available and how they can try to exploit you, and unfortunately that's just how it is. Um, but luckily there's, um, you know, security measures we can put in place on the sonic wall to prevent that from happening. And um, here we just see that being logged and informing us that, that this is still going on and, and something that may be uh, beneficial for you to, to know or to pass on to your, your offline, however that may be. And a, um, something to, to break from the previous one was the, um, the top targets report that we saw there briefly. And that one shows um, you know, who is being targeted um, by that um, uh, attack. And on the initiator side of it, that is who's initiating this um, potential attack, right? And so some of these may not necessarily, some of these are, are low priority um, attacks and may just be um, poorly crafted um, web server responses and, and requests where it may be trying to pull more information than it needs to or potentially doing the, the port scan to see um, if it's Facebook to see um, if you have potential ports that are open that it can use to facilitate even legitimate services but that's just kind of how um, some of that stuff operates. And that's pretty much it. So uh, definitely if you're not getting the GMS reports let us know. We will get you set up and get you dialed into how you want your reports. These reports are customizable to see if you want all of these um, little sub-reports, if you want some taken out, if you want less data, more data, we can customize that based on your needs. And as well, we can set you up with GMS user access where you can go ahead and, like I said, log into the system, go ahead and pull some reports, correlate some data, do a little digging, and we are more than happy to help you with that process. We are here to, you know, we are security experts. This is what we do day in, day out. We have no problem, you know, fielding a request from you, doing a little research, doing some digging, and seeing what that traffic is going, you know, what, what that looks like, what's going on, you know, and talking with you and on how we can remediate or, you know, potentially try to prevent any possible intrusion or do some forensics for you. So with that, we'll go ahead and let everyone go. And I hope everyone enjoyed. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call um, at 805-658-0800 or go ahead and open up a support ticket at support at teamnrg.com. All right. Thank you.